We have some breaking news in the weather world. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and in this video, we are going to talk about El Nino. It's been advertised, and now it is officially here, officially declared by NOAA. We're going to break down how strong this thing could get as we roll through the summer, and then, of course, what that could mean for the 2023 hurricane season by the time we get into the peak summer months, the peak hurricane season months. Hey, before we get into the video, I do want to thank all of the new subscribers for finding this channel. We appreciate that a ton. And if you are new here and want to stay updated on all things weather, especially this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. And if you find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Post in the comments where you're watching from and let's get to this. Here we go. Here is El Nino. What we need to be declared here, what we need is the water temperatures, the anomaly to be a half a degree Celsius or warmer for three months. And we have officially achieved that. You see that orange color right on your screen here. This is the satellite picking up on the sea surface temperature anomaly. And that is the calling card right through the equatorial regions, right off Peru there, of all of that orange and yellow indicating that we now officially have El Nino in play. So why do we care? about El Nino. This is going to have big time implications for weather around the world, especially in the Atlantic. We'll get to that in just one second. Basically what's happening here is we have the trade winds weakening. All of the warmer water that's been pushed closer to Australia is now kind of working its way back towards South America because the trade winds are weakening. That allows more rising motion to get thunderstorms going over this part of the world. Now, it's crazy that it works like this, but it's all intertwined. What that does for the Atlantic Basin, the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Caribbean Sea is that it increases the wind shear, especially into the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricanes, tropical systems, they do not like wind shear. They like a nice, quiet environment so that they can do their thing and develop and strengthen without any kind of pushback from the exterior environment. In an El Nino year, we typically have that increased wind shear to deter. So on the surface, on paper, El Nino is a good thing for the Atlantic hurricane season because of that increased wind shear. Now remember, it only takes one. I always go back to 1992, Hurricane Andrew. It was a very quiet season. Hurricane Andrew, though, Cat 5 monster into South Florida. So again, this is not a video to say to let your guard down. This is explaining what El Nino is and again, why we care and that we're officially here. So again, don't let your guard down. Don't get a false sense of calm. I wanted to show you some of the forecasts here and there's a lot of lines on your screen. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. But basically here, again, officially in an El Nino. And as we take a look at this screen here, we're focused on that ASO at the bottom of your screen, August, September, October. That is the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. I want to show you the mean prediction here from a lot of these models that forecast El Nino, forecast ENSO. ENSO is the parent oscillation that oscillates between El Nino and La Nina. And again, of course, officially in a La Nina, or officially in an El Nino. Excuse me, we just came out of a La Nina. Anyway, this red line here that I will get off in a second right there that is the mean that is the average of all of these models that is forecasting there on average that we get to 1.5 degrees above celsius above normal in that region that we just took a look at that equatorial pacific region if that happens that would be characterized as a strong el nino now for perspective, the strongest on record was 97, 98. We got to 2.2 degrees Celsius above normal. There are actually a few model members that get up into that realm. We will see what happens. But again, this has been advertised. That this was likely coming. And again, officially on June 8th, declared by NOAA. But the point of all of those lines there is to say, kind of long story short, that we could be heading towards a pretty strong El Nino, which again, would be a more positive thing. Now... I want to show you this before we get into that kind of forecast there. This is the European forecast kind of of the sea surface temperatures. I want to kind of caution here that the Euro is a little hot in its seasonal forecast when it comes to, at least it was last year, when it comes to its sea surface temperatures and then the tropical forecast, which I am about to show you momentarily. Anyway, 
this is the kind of the broad look here. Here are all the oranges and reds. That is the strong El Nino depicted there by August, September, October, that ASO, that peak of hurricane season. Here is the one kind of caveat, the fly in the ointment to saying, okay, we're going to see a below active year. Look at this. So here, if you follow my mouse, there is the United States. Here is the Caribbean, the greater and lesser Antilles. Here is Africa. Look at all of that orange. That is way above normal water temperature. So if we can get a period of kind of over the grand scheme of things, that wind shear to back off a little bit, there's a lot of fuel. Of course, if you're not aware, warm water temperatures really fuel these things. And the warmer the water, the stronger these things can get. And notice a lot of the tropics are that orange to dark orange color. The other thing is that I mentioned is that the increased wind shear is most prominent in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. We're still way above normal in the subtropics, like off the northeast coast of the U.S. and into parts of the central Atlantic as well. So that if we were to get something in that part of the world kind of escaping some of that on average wind shear, then we could be talking about something being able to grow and thrive. That is why as I'm going to show you the official NOAA forecast coming up. There's, I think, a little more uncertainty than normal with this season. Now, this is what I caution here. The forecast is a little hot. This is kind of hot off the press here over the last few days from uh, the ECMWF, the European model here. But it wants 16.6 storms to form in the Atlantic Basin this year. Again, it was very hot last year. It was very aggressive. It was kind of way too high, especially in the early going here uh, of last hurricane season. The average, of course, is next to it there, the orange color. That's the climate mean there at about 13.5, 14 is going to be your average. So again, the European wants a higher than normal forecast in terms of frequency for these storms as we roll forward over the next couple of months. Now, I want to get you back to my other weather computer here, and I'm going to show you the official forecast from NOAA. So I just showed you that. I just showed you some of the ingredients going to that. There you go. Their forecast is very, it's very wide. It's very broad this year. And I think one of the reasons are because there's going to be this battle. It is going to be so, so interesting to watch this year. What is going to win? And typically when you do get these strong El Ninos, that kind of puts the kibosh on everything here. We see those storms knock down completely and it's very hard to get tropical development. But again, it only takes one. Remember that. But we have this great, it's a crazy battle. The great limiting factor in the wind shear from El Nino. And the great tropical enhancer in the extremely warm water temperatures that are in the Atlantic. What wins? To enter, one leave. It's just like a movie trailer. It's going to be very, very interesting. If we can get that El Nino to become strong as forecast by the peak of, peak of hurricane season... More often than not, the El Nino is going to win. But again, something to watch. And again, here is our official forecast from May as I ramble on about movie trailers and whatnot. 12 to 17 named storms, 5 to 9 of those becoming hurricanes, 1 to 4 of those becoming major. And again, that is a very wide, a very kind of broad number there. And I think they are thinking the same kind of thing there, that we're, we have more uncertainty than normal because water temperatures are crazy in the Atlantic. But we also have this really strong El Nino coming on. Hey, guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. Thank you to all the people that have commented and subscribed. It's been great meeting you guys. We love to have you on board for the ride. Thank you for the storm reports from the Caribbean of the dust of the flooding and from the Northeast with the fires and from the Great Lakes with the fires. It's been nuts up there as well. Really appreciate everything. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time.